Right, well, I'm back to you into today's video. We're going to do a bit of a long range look ahead today. We've got the update from the Japanese model, JMA Friday, as always. So, have a look at the month head uh, outlook from the Japanese model in a moment. Also, have a look at the charts for the CFS model, which takes us through with that. We're going to go through to August, actually. Um, so, have a look at some uh, long range charts there. And we'll also have a look at the situation tomorrow with risk of thunderstorms uh, coming up from the south and the southwest. We'll start off, though, having a look at uh, this day 70 years ago. Of course, it's the anniversary of the D Day landings in uh, Normandy uh, today. So, I'll have a look at a couple of weather charts uh, for that in a moment. Before I get on with the video post, I'll mention the advertising this video as my pages at gatswebbies.com. And if you hit play on the video ad, you'll be supporting gatswebbies.com. Thanks very much for doing that. So yeah, we're going to start off with uh, 1944, 70 years ago. Uh, we're going to start off on the 5th of June, actually. Um, this is from the Historic Archive at westcentral.d, by the way. Uh, this is the 5th of June. This was the day that the uh, D-Day landings were supposed to take place, uh, actually. Um, but uh, a wonderful and famous forecast from Sir James Stagg postponed uh, the D-Day landings 24 hours because we had this horrendous area of low pressure uh, to the north of Scotland with really, really tightly packed ice bars being gales across many parts of the country, very inclement sort of chart for, uh, for June. Um, and it was very windy up the channel, there was gales up the channel. And if we go on to the next chart, which is uh, today's chart, the 6th of June 1944, we can see that uh, Sir James saw the uh, chance of this little ridge of high pressure beginning to come in off the Atlantic as the low pressure begins to move away into the North Sea off the eastern coast of Scotland. I say very famous forecast, perhaps the most famous forecast in the world uh, in history um, from Sir James Stagg. Matt. It was at a time when there was no satellites, you was uh, really flying by the seat of your pants actually to make weather forecasts, just going 24 hours out, never mind all of this going out weeks and months in advance. It was a really, really tough job to nail down 24 hours away. And yeah. That little ridge of high pressure was just the very slightest weather window that allowed the D-Day landings to take place on the 6th of June uh, 1944. It was pretty rough conditions though, it wasn't perfect, there was still quite a breeze blowing around that area of low pressure, so uh, well we've seen the footage of uh, what they went through. Uh, my grandfather, I'm sure your grandparents, great grandparents went through uh, very horrendous conditions still on the 6th of June. 1944 um, but it's a little bit better than the day before and the uh, invasion the uh, Allied invasion was successful it was a brief weather window because as we go through to the 7th of June 1944 that low pressure comes down the North Sea it's not windy that low pressure but it does bring probably an increasing risk of heavy showers thunderstorms uh, slow moving downpour so 7th of June would have been a much wetter day probably I would suggest around that area of low pressure although not particularly windy but uh, that was a very famous forecast from uh, perhaps the greatest forecaster in history uh, Sir James Stagg so let's go on anyway and have a look at uh, the month head forecast from a Japanese model I hope you found that a uh, little look at uh, the events in 1944 uh, interesting uh, as I say this is the week uh, the weekly breakdown of the month head forecast from the Japanese model these are 500 bill of our high dominance you know about uh, these of course the first thing I've got to tell you as I always do because I assume that uh, some people are watching this video for the very first time is that British Isles is upside down uh, we're just there so this is broken down into weekly periods this first week period will be taking us from the 5th to uh, the 12th of June, uh, the week that we're currently in. We've got below average heights to the west of the country. We've got above average heights sitting to the east and the northeast of the country in between. Probably bringing up a southerly to uh, southeasterly uh, wind there. So it's pretty warm. It's unsettled, particularly to the west and the southwest, more settled up to the east. But to nowhere is it particularly settled for this coming week but as we go through to the second weekly period which takes us from the 12th to the 19th just the suggestion there that we're lifting uh, the trough out of out to the west of the country going well out into the Atlantic and setting up down to the south and although there's no actual area of high pressure over us we've got near normal height so that's a drier signal I think going out towards the middle of the month and I think that sort of idea is in there in the models that things should get a bit drier 
and warmer as we go out towards the uh, middle of June. And then we go on to the third and fourth weekly periods, which takes us from the 19th of June to the 3rd of July. Uh, well, then the suggestion actually is that we're building a little bit of a ridge of high pressure up to the northeast of the country. And the trough is still quite a way away, actually, to the west and to the south. So maybe hints there that high pressure is building for the second half of June. Of course, we've got Glastonbury, Wimbledon, lots of uh, events taking place in the second half of June. If that's right, and that high pressure is starting to build up to the northeast, it could be turning dry, maybe quite hot, actually, as we go into the second half of June and possibly into the start. July. Very speculative, I wouldn't want to pin too much on that because uh, it's it's a long way off uh, and the signal isn't great but certainly just the suggestion there that there's some sort of ridge with those yellow colours building to the northeast of the country. Let's see what the CFS is uh, indicating for uh, the next two or three months. This is the 500 millibar height anomaly for June. This is from weatherweb.net and by the way these charts uh, change daily so if you come and look at this tomorrow at weatherweb don't expect to see the chart repeated but today's idea is that for June we've got low pressure weekly uh, to the west of the country and bringing in near normal sort of conditions actually it's sort of a westerly southwesterly flow not particularly wet but probably not particularly second either um, would be a very typical sort of average type June conditions uh, really with unsettled spells at times and more settled conditions also go through to the next chart which is going to take us through to July this looks very good for July this 500 mm high dominant signal for July and yet we've got high pressure ridging in there across the country Pressure is quite weak to the south, so probably at risk of some thunderstorms or unsettled weather coming up into the south of the country. But really, that's a decent enough signal for July. It will be largely dry and warm, particularly in the north of the country. A very nice month coming up, if that one's right. And then very speculative, uh, have a quick look at August. Um, well, it's still that idea, and it goes on with these long range miles, that things go downhill in August because that high pressure gets stuck up over uh, Greenland, proper northern blocking, got a trough of low pressure down to the south of the country, jet stream probably going south, probably not that far south actually, I better do that again, uh, jet stream going south, something like that. So on the cool side of the jet, we've got a trough of low pressure to the south of the country, got a ridge of high pressure blocking over uh, northern latitudes, it's not a great signal for August, and this is an idea that's in play in a lot of the models, that as we get through to the latter part of the summer, as we get through to August, things go down tubes quite a lot compared to how it starts off and that idea is still sort of churning away in the background of a lot of these longer range miles but probably don't take it too seriously but uh, it's all very speculative with these longer range miles but that idea is there a lot in a lot of these models now we've got thunderstorms coming up tomorrow as I'm sure you know so just have a quick look at that before I go this is the uh, high resolution Euro 4 model from the website Weather Online you can find the link to Weather Online links page this is a Met Office uh, product this is for precipitation forecast after 6 o'clock this evening we've got showers just really to the far west and southwest of the country but as we run through towards midnight we do find heavy rain setting up over islands some thundery showers probably coming up in towards uh, central southern parts of England and everything's really developing the second half of the night so by six o'clock in the morning there's quite a lot of rain around across England and Wales up to Northern Ireland as well a lot of this is showery admittedly but there'll be some big showers there even though it's at six o'clock in the morning expect that, that you could be woken up by some rumbles of thunder or flashes of lightning um, in the early hours of those storms trundle uh, their way up from France and then as we go up to midday, well, that first area of storm sort of congregates over northern England, so it could be a very wet morning northern England. They get a drier slot before more storms start to push up out of France and towards southern England by uh, midday. And the whole lot is going to end up pushing northwards uh, into northern England and southern Scotland by 6 o'clock in the evening on Saturday. Notice that East Anglia and southeastern England never really get these storms. And there, I think you could just about get away with a dry day. Um, and it could get very warm down in the southeast as well. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see temperatures possibly getting up to 26, maybe 27 degrees around London if these storms are continued to the west and the north of London uh, throughout Saturday. So 
around 80 Fahrenheit, really very warm, quite humid, and probably not that many storms in the far southeast. But the rest of us, uh, particularly the Midlands, South Southern England, Southwest England, Wales, um, the whole lot's going to push up northwards into Northern England and Southern Scotland, and the whole of Scotland by the end of Saturday uh, will be at risk of those heavy showers and storms. The first lot coming up tonight uh, and in the early hours of the morning, they'll all push northwards into Northern England, it'll turn drier through the morning in the south before more come up uh, from uh, France through the course of Saturday afternoon. So that's the plan with the storms. We'll see how that particular uh, prediction goes. Um, and in the longer range, well, it looks like uh, it's not going to be too bad uh, for June, particularly for JMAs, right? I think could be looking at a better second half of the month, quite a decent second half of the month there. Um, and that's it for now. I hope you found the video interesting. We'll look back at 1944. I hope you found that interesting. And we'll be having a weekend forecast tomorrow, as we always do at Gasworth. It's on a Saturday. Uh, so that's it for now. Thanks for watching.